Welcome to Capital Preview, a weekly bipartisan discussion with Iowa legislators about the key issues facing our state. Brought to you by Mediacom. Welcome to Capital Preview, a public information show that hosts our state representatives and senators on issues that are important to our state. And our guest this morning is uh, Representative Peter County, Republican from West Des Moines, Iowa, District 42. Welcome, Peter, and thanks for coming. Thanks for having me, Bill. I appreciate it. Well, you're always a good guest to have on. So I'm just going to jump right in because the time goes fast. Um, so you're chairman of the, of the House Commerce um, Committee, and so you're a busy man, and, and you affect a lot of legislation. So uh, can you tell us a little bit about the telehealth legislation that's going on right now? Sure. Um, we have a bill. It actually passed out of the House Commerce Committee last week regarding telehealth legislation. And um, the impetus for this bill started when uh, Representative Dave Heaton and I, Dave chairs the uh, Health and Human Services Budget Subcommittee. We went and toured a hospital in Clarion, Iowa, up in mm -hmm. northern Iowa. Mm -hmm. And they have a relationship with the University of Iowa Hospital and Clinics with telehealth. So basically, they communicate with the University of Iowa from Clarion via technology. It's basically like an iPad. Mm -hmm. um, and they're talking to doctors, they're getting diagnosed, and the patients are being able to communicate with those doctors. They're going through their, uh, their doses of medication. They're going through how they're feeling and the, what the next steps will be. And why is this important? It's because, you know, there aren't, we have an access problem in Iowa towards healthcare coverage and mm -hmm. doctors. Mm -hmm. They can't, not every specialist can be in every community. So in Clarion, they're able to communicate with these specialists who are at the University of Iowa. So those patients, you know, it's, we asked them one by one when Dave and I were doing this tour, do you like this? Do you like this arrangement? Yeah. And they all said they did. Mm -hmm. And they liked it because they were able to stay closer to home. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to make that three, three and a half hour uh, trip to Iowa City. Their family was able to be with them in Clarion and uh, they were comfortable. They told us they liked it. And the arrangement that uh, they've been able to do, you know, might that be a way to uh, go statewide to help this problem that we have with a, few, with, uh, a doctor shortage, mm -hmm. with an access problem. Iowa has a very decentralized population. We have a lot of small towns and a lot mm -hmm. of medium-sized cities mm -hmm. and a few larger cities. So this is a way that I think is a proactive solution to be able to help with that problem. And I'm assuming, Peter, that um, they can get in to see a specialist a lot faster yeah. with this telehealth thing. Um, does that improve kind yeah, of? Yeah, it does. It? And especially when you build in what those transportation costs might be, yeah. whether it might be in a, uh, an ambulance or a helicopter, very expensive. Yes. Um, you can keep them closer to home. That's one way to keep costs down. And uh, you can get, you know, quicker service as well as you described. Yeah. I mean, is the accuracy this um, pretty good? I mean, you know, being yeah with the communication network? It was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, they were, the doctor, they remembered the names. They know yeah. the names of who they're communicating with and how, you know, just like um, doing rounds of, right. you know, the repetition of you get to know your patient, you get to know, you know, what they like, what they don't like, and how they're reacting to um, the, the care they're getting. So it was, uh, it was good. It was, a very, it was an eye opener for, for me mm -hmm. and for Representative Heaton as well. Well, I wish you well, because that sounds like something that could really be an answer to our rural medicine. It's, uh, it's a big deal. And you know, the, the legislature, we need to be nimble and we need to provide solutions and technology that has um, what's transpired in the last half generation here. Mm -hmm. We need to be able to take advantage of that. Absolutely. And that's what this does. Yeah. Um, We'll switch gears here a little bit. How's the governor's future ready, um, future ready Iowa bill coming along? And maybe you sure. want to explain that a little bit to our sure. viewers first. Um, the governor's future ready Iowa bill. A commission was formed um, that Governor Reynolds has championed, and what the the issue that we're trying to solve here is our workforce shortage in Iowa. Wherever you are in Iowa, you'll hear this. Whether it's in rural Iowa, urban Iowa, we have a workforce shortage. We need uh, more trained and better trained folks to be able to fill the jobs that we have in Iowa. So Governor Reynolds uh, had a f has a bill 
and it's a top priority for her. Uh, it's called the Future Ready Iowa Act. And what it does is it helps get at the workforce shortage that we have, to put dollars towards the best way um, to be able to get these high demand jobs out into Iowa to start helping the economy. Mm -hmm. And I commend Governor Reynolds for uh, tackling this problem. I commend our community colleges uh, for being able to work with us to get this problem solved. This is something that will have short-term and long-term uh, effect for Iowa. And uh, it's in the Commerce Committee. Uh, we're hopefully going to pass it out. Today's Monday. Hopefully we're going to pass it out <laughs> on Wednesday uh, for Funnel Week and keep this going because this is a priority. It should be bipartisan. Um, these jobs affect all of our districts all across the state. And uh, I'm hopefully we can get a, a good product uh, for the governor to sign. Hey, Peter, just because uh, I know uh, one thing in your comments you made, Funnel Week, why don't you explain to sure. our viewers at home what Funnel Week is and why this is important that it yep. gets through? So Funnel Week is it's kind of a, it's a self-imposed deadline that the legislature has for bills, policy bills, um, to be passed out or not. And if they don't pass out by the end of the Funnel Week, the end of this Friday, um, that means the policy bill is dead for the year. So it's a busy week, it's a hectic week, um, but it's a good thing for, uh, for us to um, be on the course for yep. adjournment of the legislative session. And it's, a it's a necessary evil yeah. uh, that we're going through right now. Well, especially when you have priority bills like this, that, you know, you have, it gives you a timeline, right? That you yep. have to get it done and move on, because we have two funnel. Weeks, we have two right? funnel, you know. Timelines and deadlines are good things. They are good things, yeah, I agree. Is there a chance for tax reform, do you think, in this session? A lot of people talk about that. I think there is. You know, what the federal government did this past December um, will be the impetus for what we can get done at the state level this year. Um, if you look at some of the things that the federal government did, and we will need to couple with that, I think those things will uh, will be able to get done. Like a 529 plan that people are seeing, it's going to cost the state some money to be able to go along with what the federal government did. Um, and the 529 plan is the college savings. Yeah, the college yeah. savings, and it's opening it up from for uh, K through 12, uh, no matter what school you go to. Hmm. So that's what the federal government said, and the state would have to couple with that for it to be able to go into law hmm. uh, for an Iowa to be able to take advantage of um, for their for their uh, for their children, so for tax reform, I'm hopeful. It's a priority of mine. I think it's something that we need to do uh, for our short-term, long-term economy. This is a uh, what the federal government did. It gives us a once-in-a-generation opportunity for the state to be able to go along with that, and hopefully make a better tax system for all, lower taxes for all, mm -hmm. and uh, it's. This is an opportunity that we shouldn't let go by. That's great because I, I know a lot of people. I've had a lot of people in here, and I think you guys are all in agreement on tax reform in this state. So we hope so. It's a great state, but it has a few problems on the taxes. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the REC process in Iowa's budgeting? Yeah, well, we we find ourselves in a bit of an unfortunate situation this year and we're in the same situation that we were in last year. We've had to make a deappropriation and uh, we haven't done it yet in the house but it's going to be done soon. So what that means is revenues, uh, we, we base what this budget that we passed last year based on an estimate from the Revenue Estimating Conference and the estimates were off. So we're having to uh, deappropriate, cut about 30 million dollars. And we're going through that process now of getting that done. It's not pleasant. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. um, my what my suggestion is, you know, my frustration is the revenue estimating conference. It's now it's becoming a bit of a pattern. You know, I think like everything in life, you need to underpromise and overdeliver. Yep. And the revenue estimating conference should do that as well. And it's not easy. You know, we're predicting, you know, what are tax revenues going to be? What are the consumer habits going to be in terms of sales tax? Um, you know, how, what's the national economy doing? What are commodity prices? Where are they at? Yeah. And uh, right now they're low. Yeah. And it's hurting our, our budget. Because we're an egg state. Right? We are, absolutely. So, you know, all of those things, I just think we need to take a, I filed a bill with Representative Bossman um, from Sioux City. He's brand new. He just got elected a few weeks ago in a special election. Uh, he ran on this as well to look at the REC process and if there's something that we can do better. Um, I think it would help 
the legislature, it would help the state so we don't have to go through these types of unpleasant exercises. I, I do uh, sympathize for you guys because it's, it, it, I mean, predicting the kind of economic forecasts that you guys have to do is tough. I mean, you, there's no certainty to it. So. Yeah, it's difficult and you know, they, they do a great job. These are volunteers. Uh, right. and you know, on this board and they, they work they work hard and they're they're but this is we're talking about seven and a half billion dollars that yeah. they're predicting and all these different pools of uh, tax that go into that right. so it's it is not easy yeah. I fully appreciate that um, any thoughts on the ICN um, with the current news yeah I think uh, you know what's going on with the ICN there are hearings right now uh, in the Iowa House and to see what might the future of the ICN be. Um, again, to stick with the theme of we need to keep with current technology and what is the you know, standard practice. Is the ICN, is that layer of government necessary? Um, I think it needs to be looked at. We've looked at selling it in the past, it's never happened. Mm -hmm. um, and should there be, um, should private business be able to provide the service to the public that the ICN is providing now. Mm -hmm. So long as the costs are lower, I think they will be lower. And so long that we can keep our you know, security, there are some concerns with uh, Camp Dodge and that sort of thing and the fiber that goes to it. Um, so long we can reconcile all these things and costs could be lower, I think we'd have a winner for the taxpayer. Uh, and the ICN, is it, is it obsolete? I think it very well might be. Now, the, I know there's some oversight committees on the ICN. Where, where are they at in the process? Uh, I think they've had a meeting okay. and uh, they're starting to get towards it. My guess is that would be where the, the bill will uh, come about and uh, we'll get to the full Iowa House in terms of reforms of the ICN. Got it. Well, good luck on that one too. Yeah, That's been you. around for how many years? Uh, it's uh, over 20 years, I yeah, believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the theme of the current um, session uh, thus far? Well, <laughs> this week, is an important one with our funnel week. I think uh, the current theme, well, number one, the bill that we passed that got signed into law, the one bill, is water quality. And uh, it, was, it was a good bill. Mm -hmm. It's going to provide over $250 million over time towards better water in Iowa. So I'd say that is, uh, has been the theme thus far. The rest is to be determined. Um, I'm hopeful for uh, some big things, tax reform for Iowans. Uh, I'm hopeful for Future Ready Iowa to improve our workforce in Iowa. And a uh, priority for me is this telehealth bill. Mm -hmm. I think it could be uh, some short-term and long-term gains uh, for this state uh, that we need to get done. So I'm still uh, very hopeful and optimistic that we can get done and have a great year. Well, Peter, your plate is full. You're, you've got some good bills. you got some good... Um, things going down there at the State House. So good luck to you. Yeah. And I appreciate you joining us here this morning. I appreciate it. Capital that. Preview. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bill. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you for joining us for another uh, episode of Capital Preview.